so nice to be in the church again this morning and have this time of fellowship around these great articles of God. And now we are never in a hurry here around the tabernacle, you know. We kind of take our time and sometimes it gets a little tiresome for those who are standing up and as they can or possibly can move out at times and give uh, somebody... The children would want to come up a little closer here. I think we can accommodate a few more. And here's two extra seats, three by four up here on the platform. If anybody in the back would want to come up here and be comfortable. Or if somebody's a little backward being their first time in the church and some of the elders would come up here and sit down. We'd be glad to have them up here so it would give somebody else a seat. Some of the deacons or, or some minister or so forth that would come up here it might be uh, an opportunity to give someone else uh, a seat that's standing, and some of the people are still coming around trying to get in the lot in the back. <clears throat> they see the aisle blocked up, then they go away, and they miss. Now, here's an extra seat up here in front. I believe, is that right, young lady? Right here is a seat here, in, right in the front, right here, and I see Brother Woods is getting up. There's two more right up here. Just keep moving right on up this way. Two more right up here. In the front, if anyone wants to come forward, one, two, three, three seats open here, possible four at the platform. And uh, you'll come up, well, then that'll open up some seats from the back, because many times the people come in after the service is started, they'll look around the back door and then go back out again, and they miss the services. Here's one over here, one right in the center. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, that makes five seats empty now up here in the front. You come right on up. Just make yourself feel welcome and at home. Lord bless you, Brother George. Glad to see you again this morning. While there, that's mighty fine. Sister, now you, a little lady, if she wants, there's one right back over there for her. Right there, sweetheart. Go right back there where that man's is standing at the, right there. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Everybody seated comfortably, then they feel better. They feel like that you can... I know it isn't too comfortable in here, but we um, want you to be as, as near that as we can make for you. Now, we are looking forward to the oncoming meeting, anticipating great blessings in the future. This coming meeting of prophecy. Now, this morning I told the folks I was going to pray for the sick, and this will be the last opportunity I'll have now praying for the sick in the church until after the meeting. Uh, during time of the meeting, we want to keep it on the prophetic line if we possibly can. Then after that, I think maybe, maybe before Christmas, I would like to maybe have another little couple nights meeting on Daniel here at the church because maybe the first year I'll, I'll be leaving again and I know we don't have too much time left. So now, if anyone are coming and wants to get reservations uh, at motels and so forth, we have that set up now so we can get reservations. And Mr. Morris, which was healed of cancer of the throat, he was an acrobat, married into Dr. Adair's family, my friend here in the city, and it operated him for cancer of the throat and he was dying. And the Lord led me down to his house six, seven years ago where he was laying at his sister's place dying with cancer of the throat. And I come on him up here at the barber shop the other day testifying. Said I couldn't even swallow. And said in five minutes after I prayed for her, I ate my dinner. And said it's never had a trace of it since. He runs the Wayfair Motel. And he said, Billy, I hear you got a meeting coming up and any of your people that will call in here I'll give him the cheapest rates. He's got a new motel here and give him family rates and, and so forth. And I tuck his cards and they're at the office and so forth. And we can contact and get in other places where we, after that reservation's run out, where we can get the best of prices, the best accommodations to suit what they, your friends think is best. Many of you, of course, will probably have some of them in your own home. And that's mighty nice. If you can take care of someone, it's it's more comfortable like at home, you know, when you can have Christians and fellowship. And then you can kind of uh, go run over the Scriptures together. I want you to each one bring your book, bring your pencil.
because we're going to give times, dates, scriptures on the seven church ages. The church ages, seven last church ages, and how they're heaping up. And it's a prophetic message that after that, first I'll preach it, then it goes on to tape, magnetic tape, from that to records, and then to to be tucked off by shorthand and then typed into a book. And the book is going to be a commentary on the, on the seven church ages. And if I didn't think that it was essential, and if I didn't think it was badly needed, I certainly wouldn't take the people's time Amen. of saying it. But I believe that it's maybe the last time Amen. that we'll ever receive it, from this church especially. So now, let's be real prayerfully about it. Real prayerfully. Now, next week, I've got to go to Louisiana, you know, for the meeting down there. Now, I'll be at uh, Shreveport, Louisiana, uh, from the 24th through the 27th at Shreveport, Louisiana, with Brother Moore. And that's just a regular evangelistic service. And then I get back here on the 29th or the 30th, and on the 4th of December, we begin here. Now, there'll be a morning message, and now, if I cannot, at the night time, get that church age to where I think it should be, that the people thoroughly understand it, then I'll go right over in the next morning or the next afternoon, finish it up here at the tabernacle, and then go back to the church age that following night, because I want to be sure that it's all gotten, see, because it's essential. We know that we're living in a, a very strange time. And we, we know that by the, the way that things are heaping up. And now in this, in what I say from the tabernacle, if there be strangers here, the reason I bring these messages and so forth at the tabernacle and not out in the field of evangelism is because this is our home base here. And here I feel that I can preach doctrine the way that I see it, the way I believe it. Now that don't conflict with anybody's religion. See, however what they want to believe, that's all right. And now, uh, there's many times, you know, if we'd all go this morning and get fingerprints, there's none of us sure to have our thumbs look alike. They claim there's no two noses looks alike. I guess you're all glad don't look like mine, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, there's no two people exactly alike. So two things. So remember, but we'll all admit and agree that we love the Lord Jesus up on those days. <clears throat> I said, if a Roman Catholic, if he is depending on the Catholic Church, which is their fundamental doctrine, but if he believes that that Catholic Church is going to save him, he's lost. Amen. But if he's got faith in Jesus Christ, God's Son, and depending on Him for salvation, he's saved. Amen. If a Methodist or a Pentecostal or a Baptist, if they're depending on their church or organization to save them, they're lost. But if they're depending on Jesus Christ and accepted Him because it's your own personal faith in Christ Jesus that saves us, whether you are Baptist, Pentecostal, Lutheran, Catholic, Jew, or what more, it's your personal faith in Jesus Christ. I, I, this is magnetic tape, too. It's going right now. So I'm sure that everybody clearly understands that. But... When a person is preaching a doctrine, then you've got to stay with your own belief. If you don't, then you're a hypocrite. If you say something because someone else says it, and in your heart you don't believe that, then you're a hypocrite because you're saying something that you don't believe. I'd rather be, be criticized a little up on things that I do believe than to be a hypocrite in the sight of God uh, uh, trying to compromise with someone else. And now on these meetings here... You may disagree with some of these things tremendously, but don't, don't fall out with me because I, uh, I, I, I love you. And that's right. Now, I think I'll make it clear that I believe each one of you, if you're Catholic, Protestant, or Jewish, or whatever you are, if you are depending on and have accepted Christ as your personal Savior, you are saved. For it's by faith are we saved that... That by grace. And so our churches, well, our affiliation of churches won't mean much. But I think in this, if you'll come and not be prejudiced, that you'll find out that that very church denomination is what's got us all tore up the way we are now. That's what's brought the trouble, see. 
And if we'd just leave it the way it was. Now, I'm putting off something here. And I, I want to make a quotation. And I'm sure that you here at the tabernacle, my friends, know that I don't say this to say, see, I told you. I, I don't mean that. I hope I never get to a place that I make myself before people as a know-it-all. If I ever get like that, please somebody come correct me and straighten me out and say, here, wait a minute. See, I don't want to be like that. But when God says anything and it proves to be the truth, I, I like that to be known because it wasn't I that said it, it was He that said it. Now, I was, and as I said last Sunday, I believe it was here, I've been in this pulpit for 28 years, and never one time did I ever mention politics on no way at all until last Sunday, and I told you people just to pray before you went to polls and vote. I went down to Brother Wright's the other day, and I guess he's one of the oldest, he and Brother Roy Slaughter and a few of those that know me all these years. And Brother Wright never knew how I voted. He never knew whether I was Democrat or Republican, and that's a second home to me. We wrote together, prayed together, and you never asked me about my vote, and I never did ask you. It's so insignificant. That's the reason, Brother Wright. Thank you. Thank you. I never, no one knowed how I voted, because both parties, neither one can brag. But last week, the reason I was expressing the way I did, there was more than politics included. I'd like to read you a prophecy that was given. I got on, uh, and many, by the way, Mr. Mercer, and many of them are going to take some of these old prophecies and dig them out and revise them a little or bring them up to date uh, and put them in papers. I'd like to read some things that I'd like for you to... Um, to um, this one first. I'd um, like to read something to you. 1932, listen to this. As I was on my way, or as I was getting ready to go on my way to church this morning, it came to pass that I fell into a vision our services is being held on Mags Avenue at the old orphan's home where Charlie Kern lives in part of the building. He lives just across the street now. And it came to pass that while I was in this vision, I seen some dreadful things take place. I speak this in the name of the Lord. The president, which now is President Franklin D. Roosevelt, I remember this is 28 years ago, will cause the whole world to go to war. And the new dictator of Italy, Mussolini, shall make his first invasion towards Ethiopia. And he will take Ethiopia. But that will be his last. He shall come to his end. We will be in war with Germany. Watch Russia. Now that's the communism, Nazism, and fascism. Watch Russia. But that is not the main one to watch. It shall also has been an evil thing done in this country. They have permitted women to vote. This is a woman's nation. And she will pollute this nation as Eve did Eden. Now you see why I'm hammering the way I do? Yes, sir. I got thus saith the Lord. In her voting, she will elect the wrong person. The Americans will take a great beating at a place that Germany will build 
which will be a great wall built of concrete. Imagine all lying. Eleven years before it was ever built. But finally they will be victors. Then when these women help elect the wrong person, then I've seen a great woman rise up in the United States, well-dressed and beautiful, but cruel in heart. She will either guide or lead this nation to ruination. I got in princess, perhaps Catholic Church. Also, science will progress, especially in the mechanical world. Automobiles will continue to get like egg shape. Finally, they will build one that won't need a steering wheel. They've got it now. It will be controlled by some other power. Then I've seen the United States as one smoldering, burnt over place. It will be near the end. Then I got in the princess. I predict that this will take place. I remember the Lord, that's what the Lord showed. But I predict this will take place before 1977. Upon this prediction I base because of the onrushing slot that's coming now. How fast that it was moving, how long it'll take till this nation meets its place. Now, look what happened now. In President Franklin D. Roosevelt took America to England's Tea Party. That's right. Germany never picked on us. We picked on them. Throw the whole world into a war that calls the world war. The Germans built the Maginot Line, which there, any veteran here knows what you took there at the Maginot Line. Women given the right to vote elected President-elect Kennedy, the woman's vote. The wrong man, which will finally lead to full control of the Catholic Church in the United States, then the bomb comes that explodes her. There are seven things predicted, and five of them has already happened. Amen. Amen. So you can judge yourself how far away we are. We're near the end. Amen. If them five things happen, these other two things are bound to happen. Amen. It's just got to happen. I do not think that Mr. Kennedy will have much effect now because he'll make a wonderful president in order to bring in the others to get a scene set just like they have in England, like they did in Mexico, like they did everywhere else, like that. And the American people so unstable, not spiritually, they're smart, but too smart for their own good. Intelligence swings backwards sometimes and backfires. So they... I'm preaching on that this morning in a little bit. So we find out we're, we're right on the verge. The reason I said this, that's the reason I pressed that the other day. So hard the way I did, but it was that that did it. That's right. Women's vote. That put, did you notice the rallies on the television? Yeah. Nixon would be pretty near all man. All of them wanted to kiss Kennedy, the women, jump the straddle of the cars and everything like that, jumping up and down. <laughs> And now, let me bring something else I haven't got written here, but on magnetic tape, and this is tape too. 1956, in Chicago, Illinois, standing at the that, uh, Lane Tech High School, they were there. I said, this year is going to be the changing point of America. I just come from overseas. Don't know why I come. Come back. Cancel my meetings in Africa and around. Come back. Billy Graham, something mysterious, he canceled his. Tommy Osborne canceled his. And we all crossed in the United States. 
in meetings. I said, America will either receive or reject Christ this year. Then I said, when they elected in Indiana a 22-year boy, year old boy to be judge, the Spirit of the Lord came on me and I said, they'll finally have a president. They'll be one of these crew-cut, playboy, beatneck type presidents. A ladies' man. Now, them's predictions years ago. You see where we're at? It's later than we think. So I think of these messages on these seven church ages is timely. Let's be in prayer and study. Now, if you disagree and say, I think Brother Branham's wrong, that you got a right to do that. But before we do it, before you do, let's search what the Lord has said with the Scriptures. See if, and then the prophecies, what was given, that would come to pass, and look to see whether they come to pass or not. Now, it's on tape and so forth. You know it spoke years ago, and here it is now coming to pass. Mussolini went down to Ethiopia, didn't he? Those poor colored people down there was with size blades and sticks to fight with, and him modern machinery, he just slaughtered them down. Come back blowing about it, but he met his doom. That's correct. And the Americans and the Germans built the Maginot Line, and they and Americans taken a hard beating there, but finally overcome. Exactly right. You veterans, brother, know that. And you all at the D-Day and so forth, and when they went in. Now, and you find out then that women given the rights to vote and they elected a president that they should not have elected. See, that's that fall. And the face of that now, we're coming up to this next meeting coming up. And be prayerful and pray hard now that God will bless us and will open our understandings that we might know the hour that we're living. Let us bow our heads now for a word of prayer. Our gracious Lord... As in one way, I, I feel shaky to know that this world is at the end time. I would not know what nation to flee to. There is no more refuge, only looking up. For it has told us when these things begin to come to pass, then look up. For our redemption is drawing near. Oh, God, I pray for the sinful world today in its condition to see how everything is going on. I pray that somehow, Lord, that you'll speak to every heart, every minister, that he might be a burning flame in these last days to call to repentance and back again to the faith, the church of the living God. As we know, we're living in that Lady Ossian church age where that they'll be lukewarm. I pray, Father, that you'll let us hold tight to that what we have, Christ, looking for that day of His appearing. Forgive us of our sins as we have forgive those who have sinned against us. And we know now, Lord, that we see the outside world knowing that it had to come to pass. There's no way of stopping it. Though we speak against it and give a voice against it, yet we know in our hearts according to thy word it's going to be anyhow. For thou hast said so, but in that day of the judgment, when God's great magnetic tape will be played, we want our voice against wrong and far right. Encourage us today, Lord, by thy presence. Bless all these ministers that cheer. And all the lay the of the church, all the born again across the world. The great fire brands that you've got on radio and out in the other parts of the world preaching the gospel, missionaries going hungry, husbands and wives under deep persecution still standing at the post of duty. God bless them today. 
And in the little tabernacle, give us of thy blessings, Lord. Anoint us. Bless those who sang this morning the wonderful songs of Zion that we've cherished in our heart through the years, knowing someday we'll stand and sing those songs in the presence of the Lamb. Bless the Word today and anoint the message, Lord, for we ask it in Jesus' name and for His sake. Amen. I want to call your attention this morning to some Scripture found in the book of Genesis. And now I'll try to hurry right through on this message, the Lord willing, because we want to pray for the sick and have baptismal service. I want you to turn to the first book of the Bible, the first chapter of the book. Genesis, the first chapter. And let's start reading from the ninth verse. <clears throat> And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and he gathered together all the waters and called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass and herbs yielding seed and fruit trees yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herbs yielding seed after his kind, and the trees yielded fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Now, I want to take a text upon the subject of condemnation by representation. And may the Lord add his blessings to his word. Two or three weeks ago, I was crossing the western states. And I was looking along as driving by myself, going to meet the Christian businessman up in Idaho. And I was amazed as I watched the billboards, the advertisement. You can almost look around and see what's on people's mind and what's on their hearts. As I've often said, let me go into a person's house and let's see what kind of music they listen to. Let me see what kind of books they read and uh, what kind of songs they sing, what kind of pictures they have in their house. I can just about tell you what the nature of that person is. It's because they... No matter what they testify contrary, the fruits prove what it is. Amen. And I noticed that we are a great scientific nation, scientific world. And I noticed on the billboards, especially in the western corn belt and so forth, it was a picture of a man holding an ear of corn, shelling off the corn saying, Man, what corn this is. And it was uh, a noted hybrid corn. And somehow while thinking on that, riding along by myself, and you can't keep your radio on no more because especially in localities where there's just ever stations, this old boogly-woogly music and all that stuff, you know, the rock and roll, and you just don't have, unless you just happen to, Tune in just an hour and get the news and weather, and have to turn it off again. So I believe maybe the Lord was helping me, and I wrote on the back of my roadmap, hybrid, because something struck me when I looked at it. Such fine, great, big grains of corn, I thought, that's so much different than the corn we used to raise. 
Everything becomes a hybrid. But did you know that it's no good? It has no life in it. It cannot reproduce itself again. You can't plant hybrid corn. If you do, you, you've got just a little dwarf field. Because it's been hybrid. Then I got up into the mountain and, and one of the guides that was with me, he was a, a chicken raiser. And he raising chickens. Then he just uh, guided up in the mountains for uh, the pastime. Very fine man. And when he learned that I was a preacher, why well, quickly he began to speak to me on hybrid chickens. Then when he did that, that brought back my little text wrote down on my road map. Hybrid. Well, while laying in our camp bags in the snow up in the mountain, I said to him, I would like to learn more about such chickens. Well, he said, science has really done a great thing. said, they have bred chickens with different things until they got to a place till it's darling really no legs on the chickens or no wings on the chickens. It's just all breast. But he said the bad part comes now that people don't want it because it's too soft or meat. And the chicken only lives one year. And it dies. It's almost dead to start with. You see, it's high breeding. It's not right. No good. And most people now who wants to have a delicious chicken dinner goes out in the country and buys themselves a chicken. It's got feet can scratch and wings can fly. and it, it's, it's, a, it's a chicken. The way that God made it. But it's uh, the high breeding of the chicken has brought it to just breast and it topples around and has to keep it on screen. They can't put it out. It can't scratch. It can't make its living. And the meat is so bad that they can't uh, use it. And if the chicken is made a laying chicken, its eggs will not hatch. And then another thing, the chicken lays itself to death in a year. It only lives a year. And I thought, well, now that's some chicken. <laughs> High breeding. Carrying up what God has made. Then we had a string of mules that we packed with. And I noticed that the mule is hybrid also. Don't never lay it on God of making a mule. God never had anything to do with that. No, that was man. The mule don't know where he belongs. He, he can't reproduce himself again. He's a, he's a hybrid. See, he don't know who his father was or his mother was. And he can't reproduce again. He's just a mule and he's on the skid row to death. And no matter how much he tries to bring forth his kind, he can't do it. That's all contrary to God's Word. Amen. God said here in Genesis 1.11, Let every seed bring of its kind. For the life is in itself. Let every seed bring of its kind. But man is trying to show that he's smarter than his creator. He wants to prove that he knows more about this thing than God does. So therefore, he's constantly through science trying to show God that he knows more about it than he does. And God just lets him go on through his scientific research. And in doing so, he kills himself. God lets his own ignorance kill himself. My mother back there used to say, give the cow enough rope, it hangs itself. Well, that's true. And you just let God just let man go on and hang himself with his own foolishness. He'll never be smarter than God. God knows what's right. But man through high breeding, 
are trying to produce a better product than what God created. Now, God, when He created His church, He created a Pentecostal church. That was the original. A Pentecostal church filled with the Holy Ghost. Men and women led by the Spirit of God. Man couldn't leave that alone. He wanted to hybrid the church. So he brought in the world with it. Theology, doctrines, denominations. Oh, sure, it makes a prettier church. My, yes. How much different it is from the original church. Oh, we got big buildings, educated preachers, the better class of the people, the up and up, better dressed, putting their names in it and their money in it to keep it up and up, sending their ministers to seminaries to polish up their scholarships and theology all the time, taking them farther away from God. That wasn't God's plan at the beginning. He never sent one of them to any seminary. He sent them to an upper room to wait there until the Holy Ghost came up on them to be ordained ministers of the Lord. But high breeding, bringing the church to theology, instead of letting the Holy Spirit lead it, they bred in bishops, general overseers, when the Holy Spirit is God's ori- original leader of the church, but they hybrid the church, like they did the chicken, like they did the mule, like they did everything else, hybriding it, making it different, breeding in the world the things of the world, basketball games and soup suppers and and bunco games and all kinds of things of the world. It's true, it's prettier. It's a bigger building. A polished class of people. They're singing maybe more orderly in the notes and so forth than the the old-fashioned Pentecostal with the tambourine and the guitar. But it hasn't got the seed. It hasn't got the rain to it. They explain away all of it. This is better than that was. Like they tried the hybrid corn. It's better than the old was. It wasn't better. The life in it wasn't better. The outside might have looked better, but the life wasn't right. And we're talking about life. The life isn't right in high breeding. God wants it in a way that He made it at the beginning. So the church has been hybrid. And now it comes to a place to where that the church is more like a lodge than it is like a Pentecostal blessing. The scholars are more educators than they are preachers. They are more of a place of uh, getting great scholarship. Our pastor has a doctor's degree or, or something like that, of theology. And they cannot breed themselves back. As beautiful as it is, they cannot come back to their self. How would you... They cannot cross themselves. Try to cross a Methodist with a Baptist and see what you got. You got a worse renegade than you had in the first place. That's right. You can't... You got a dwarf. That's right. You played hybrid corn to come up out like that and turn yellow. There's no life in it. It's a reason it can't produce and that's what's the matter with the church today. It hasn't got any life in it. It's got a lot of showing a a better class of people. They call it bigger grains, finer buildings, more scholar preachers, but no life in there to reproduce newborn babes. Can't cross itself back. When the grain was first planted, the second place, they come in that hybrid. And the first thing you know, it can't never come back. I asked any scholar to go with me through history. Any church that ever left its original foundation has never been able to come up again. When God sent Luther and he had a revival, he swept the world. But he organized it and hybrid it with the world, like the Catholic Church. And when he did, what did he do? He produced a bunch of renegades 
hybrid, and he never has rose and never will rise. Amen. Long come John Wesley and done the same thing with the revival. As soon as him and, and Asbury and the old founders died, they organized it and made the Wesleyan Methodist Church, and they've never raised, and they never will raise no more. The Anglin Church. The same thing off of Calvin. When they had a revival, it was fine. Brother Simpson packing in his pocket now. From Canada. The Anglin Church now. They've gone in, the ministers and all of them, to drinking. They mix their beer and gin and stuff together right to church. Have parties and drink. What is it? It can never go back to its original again because it's hybrid with the world. It's lost. Now we talk about the Anglin and the Methodists and the Baptists, but the Pentecostals the same. A few years ago we had a Pentecostal church that was on fire. But what did they do? They hybrid it. Denominated it. Brought it back into the world. Now what have you got? Just exactly like God did with the mule. It's on his devil's skid row. He'll never return. It's finished. Denominated and broke down and now they got finer churches. Oh, the Pentecostal people used to be in a little mission on the alley corner. Used to be kicked about from pillar to post and thrown in jail half the time for shouting all night. Well, they sure have a hard time finding one now. What happened? They interbred it. They made it like the Baptists, like the Baptists made like the Methodists, the Methodists made like Luther, Luther made like the Catholic. Amen. Why they got a high-bred bunch of wild donkeys? That's right. The ignorant thing I know of is a mule. He has no personal feelings at all. He'll hum around you until the last hour of his death to get to kill you. He don't know nothing but G and Haw. He has no sentimental feeling. He don't know who his papa was, who his mama was, and where he's going or where he come from. That's about like a lot of people today. Amen. It's about the same. Did you ever see a mule? You can talk to him and he will stand with them ears out. Look at that big long face and them ears sticking out. That's what a lot of these donkeys do. That's right. They stand and look at you and pray. Days of miracles has passed. That divine healing and speaking in tongues and the Holy Ghost. There's no such a thing. That's right. New religion. It's right hybrid. That's all he knows. He can never know nothing else. Let him own. Let's go on with God. Hybrid. Just a mule. Don't know where he come from. He isn't pedigreed. He can't be pedigreed. But a horse is different. Yes, sir. You take a fine stock pedigreed horse... He just is gentle and nice. Likes to get out there and prance around, you know, and comes back, lays his head over your shoulders and knickers and carries on. He's, he's a fine animal. He's faithful. Stand with you. Wow, he knows he's got papers to show that he's pedigreed. Amen. He's got it rolled out that he's pedigreed. His blood's pure. That's the way it is with a born-again saint of God. You can tell him Jesus Christ the same yesterday and forever he are. Amen. Why, he's pedigreed. His experience is wrote in the Bible. He's born of the blood of Jesus Christ and he's a pedigreed Christian. Glory. Go interbreeding there. Be genuine. Gentle, meek. You can teach him something. Tries to obey. You can take him out in the shows and almost make him be like a, a human being. You bow, prance, jump. You never seen a mule doing that. You don't see no mules in a show acting like that. Because he hasn't got the quality to start with. That's the reason a born again Christian can accept divine healing. A born again Christian can accept the Holy Ghost. Yes, because there's something in him. Amen. Something down in him to make him believe the Spirit of God in there very find the Word of God. Amen. That he is pedigree. Yes. But mules don't do so. They can't. 
There's nothing in them to make them do it by. Now on this high breeding, you know, Eve was the mother of high breeding. She misbred the human race. You know, after she had did this evil thing, and I know this is on tape, so we'll make it baby form for him if you want to. <laughs> but when she had this affair with the serpent, which was not a serpent, a reptile, the Bible said he's the most subtle of all the beasts of the field. Science trying to find now the, the bones of some creature between a monkey and a man and applying it to colored race and so forth like that. They're as ignorant as they can come. Amen. The serpent was a man. Amen. The blood of an animal won't mix with the blood of a human. No, sir. But this species was so close between there till he did mix and Satan knew that. Amen. Great giant of a fella. Isn't it strange that they found... Great giants in the land after this? I wish Josephus the writer would have thought of that. Where did those giants come from? The seed of the serpent. Yeah, right. The Bible said that's right. that he would, con he would cause the seed of the serpent. The seed of the serpent. The serpent had a seed. Yeah. And the seed of the woman. Yeah. But we better leave them alone. They don't believe it. So we just take them on their baby farm. But when she did that, she polluted the whole thing. Right. Now, don't get it to that ridiculous saying, please, of an apple tree. <laughs> As I've often said, if eating apples caused women to realize they were naked, they had better pass the apples again. Because it, it's time. I don't say that to be rude, but I'm saying it to, to make a point that it's the truth. Wasn't apples. Let's not get that ridiculous about it. It wasn't no apple tree. But let's take it on another tree so we can bring it out and fulfill our text. Let's take it a tree of faith that Eve taken of this forbidden tree of unbelief. Then we can make the text come out. It was faith. She disbelieved God's Word. God said a certain, certain thing will happen. She ought to let it alone. She ought to have believed it the way God said it. But no, Satan come along with his theology. And she mixed it. And gave it to Adam. And it caused a hybrid faith. That's what the church has got today. So-called church, a hybrid faith. It's mixed with fears, doubts, frustrations. If it was genuine faith, it wouldn't move. When God says anything, it would be that way. But see, she mixed it. Took what God said and what Satan said and churned it together and said, here it is. That's the way many people do today. See, they take what the Bible says and what man says. Makes a hybrid faith. And when they do, they bring it back. Oh, it makes a beautiful church. Sure, but there's no life in it. It's dead. A hybrid faith. Oh, I do believe that God was, yes, but now He's not a healer today. That's hybrid faith. I believe that He gave the Holy Ghost to the Pentecostals back there on the day of Pentecost, but that's not for us today. A hybrid faith. Amen. Condemned by God. Hybrid, no good. Stay away from it. It's evil. It brings in doubts. Maybe I'll go up and get healed. Maybe the Lord will heal me. That's hybrid faith. It's no good. That's church faith. We want God's faith. God said something and that's the truth. Stay with it. Amen. Oh, I wish my words is wrote with an iron pen. Hallelujah. Stay with what God said. It's the truth. Yeah. Hybrid faith. It'll read Hebrews 13. You say, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and forever. Hebrews. And then the hybrid faith comes in. 
Well, in a certain way, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. But he's not, he can't heal today because that's out of his program. But genuine faith will say he is the same. Amen. It's not hybrid. It's not, it's not all churched up with theology of man. Not mule religion. Man's word and God's word mixed together. Like the perverted vine. Jesus said it wasn't so at the beginning. And it isn't so at the beginning. God wanted every seed to bring its kind. Yes. And we hybrid anything, we ruin God's program. You take a flower. The original flower, violet, is blue or white. Leave it alone, it'll go back to white. You have to keep breeding it up all the time. God makes things different. He likes it different. And high breeding is such a dangerous and damnable thing till it ruins God's plan. It ruins the human race. God even said in Deuteronomy that a, a bastard child would not even be permitted into the generation, into the congregation of the Lord for ten generations. That's how bad adultery is. Ten generations, ten times forty, four hundred years. Before a hybrid, a woman that's married to a man, or a man married to a woman, that'll cross the lines of holy wedlock and bring in an illegitimate child that generations will not come into the kingdom of the Lord until ten generations. Deuteronomy 30, uh, 23, 2. All right, it won't come in. A illegitimate child, he or his generation, or his generation, or his generation, even though they're trying like Esau, weeping to find a place, it takes ten generations. Forty years is a generation. Can you see this damnable, corruptible world is ready for judgment? So evil. Cross up. Cross up what God has joined together. A woman live unclean to her husband. Husband live unclean to his wife and bring a hybrid child. Oh, some women say, oh, isn't he beautiful? Great big tall fellow. That's the same thing maybe Eve thought. She brought a hybrid child. And the hybrid child was Cain. And through Cain come giants. It's always been the curse of the Lord. Hybrid. Stay away from it. Hybrid religion. Don't mix it. Jesus said, if you have the faith of a mustard seed. Why do you like a mustard seed? Kale and spinach mixed together makes rape. But mustard won't mix with nothing. Mustard, genuine mustard. You ain't hybrid yet. It's mustard. Man who are born of the Spirit of God is God's sons and daughters. They don't mix with the world. They're not hybrid. They stay with God. They stay with His program. They stay with His Spirit. They don't want none of the hybrid stuff. Don't make it how big and polished the other churches look, how big and polished the congregation looks, how glamorous and what great gatherings they have. That don't faze them a bit. Always like that song. Teach me, Lord, to wait while hearts are on flame. While they're building big buildings and having great things. Teach me, Lord, to wait when hearts are aflame. Let me humble my pride. Call on your name. Teach me not to rely on what others do, but wait in prayer for an answer from you. For they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up like wings with an eagle. They'll run and not be weary. If they walk, they'll not faint. Oh, teach me, Lord, teach me, Lord, to wait. (laughs) Don't be carried away with hybrid stuff. It's not right. You'll finally come to its end. It can't go back. Once hybrid, it's finished. It can never reproduce itself again. If it does, it's a dwarf. Look what the look what Wesley revival when we get in that Philadelphian age. What a revival they had. Look at the next revival. Look at the next revival. Just keep dwarfing, 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 dwarfing. Until now look where's that now? Look where the Baptist started with John Smith. Look where it's dwarfed to. 
Look at the Pentecostals. They started in 1906. They interbred with the world. Brought in the things of the world and the doctrine of the world. They adopted for the Holy Ghost a handshake. They adopted for immersing sprinkling. They adopted for water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, like the world. Amen. They adopted a handshake to receive the Holy Ghost instead of speaking in tongues and the power of God to follow. Amen. They put divine healing in the doctor's office instead of on your knees in prayer. Amen. They hybrid themselves and they're dwarfing each year. Dwarfing. Those things are not in the Bible. Those doctrines. But to be popular, to make themselves a church, to line them up as they are now with the confederation of churches, Amen. Amen. to bring themselves in, to make them like the rest of them. They did that and dwarfed themselves. Keep dwarfing. First generation of Pentecostals is on fire. Second generation begin to die out. That's now. Watch what the third generation will bring. It ain't going to go all the way out before Jesus comes because the lady of sea in church was lukewarm, neither warm nor hot. It still had a little bit of the blessing left in it. It's mixed up. One here and there and back there. They were mixed up. Not altogether cold, but warm. God said the church in its hold, you even make me sick in my stomach. When I have given you the Holy Ghost and you interbred it with the world and let the things of the world creep in, I'll just spew the whole organization out of my mouth. But fear not, little flock. The one who's kept the commandments of God, it's your Father's good will to give you the kingdom. Amen. Stay with the Word. Amen. What the Word says, stay with it. Amen. Don't you interpret that with nothing. I don't care what bishop, what archbishop, what man says anything about it. Stay right with the Word. Amen. If Peter said on the day of Pentecost, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, every other place in the Bible they were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, don't you never accept Father, Son, and Holy Ghost Amen. for that. Thank you, Lord. If you do, you're hybriding yourself. Yes. Now you show me one place in the Bible where anybody's ever baptized in the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost. It's not there. It's man-made theology that's been hybrid into the church. Given a chance for an idol like it's coming into the nation now. I can prove to you by history and by the Bible that anybody that's baptized in the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost is baptized in the Catholic Church. By their own catechism. They said, will any of the Protestants be saved? Said, some of them, they accept some of our doctrine. They claim to believe the Bible. Said, the Bible said, repent, be baptized. Peter did on the day of Pentecost and so forth in the name of Jesus Christ. Their Bible teaches that, but they accept our doctrine. That's, right, right. that's Father, Son, Holy Ghost. That's, that's a catechism. It ain't a Protestant doctrine. It's a Catholic doctrine. But we as Pentecostals interpret it with man-made theology. You see where we're getting? No wonder God can't send a revival. He's got nothing to build it on. Then he'll take individuals and build it on them individuals and declare them before the world who stay with that word. Sprinkling. Who ever heard of that? Accepting water baptism by immersing, taking it away from there and making it a sprinkling. Who ever heard of it? Give them a right hand of fellowship to bring them into the church about letter. Nonsense. It's hybrid. Amen. We must all come the same route. Amen. Some of them said, I'm Methodist because mother's a Methodist. Mother might have been a Methodist Christian, but that don't make you one. She might have been a Baptist Christian, but that don't make you one. As I've often quoted David, saying David is saying that God don't have any grandchildren. God don't have grandchildren. God isn't grandpa. Nowhere in the Bible said God's grandpa. So what do you got that extreme Trinitarian idea? God the Father, one. God the Son, another. The Father, and then God the Holy Ghost. That makes God a grandpa. God don't have grandchildren. God has sons and daughters. No grandchildren. Sons and daughters. You don't accept grandchildren. Every fellow must come the same way the other one did. You got to be a son or a daughter. So you see how breeding what it's done? Just root the church. We're all condemned through Eve, through high breeding. That's exactly right. All of us come to that spot through Eve. Eve caused the whole human race to fall. Her and Adam are one. She, it started with the woman. It'll end with the woman. One man in her called the man of sin. They forgive sins on earth. 
taking the doctrine and giving it out to the people and they drink it. The peoples of the earth, the kings, the Bible says, have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Amen. What is her fornication? Is her untrueness. A woman commits fornication that is untrue to her husband. A church that commits fornication preaches something that's not God's Word. High breeds a church. What did she do? She bred in some daughters, too. Now, what is the daughters of the Catholic Church? Where did Luther come from and on down the line? Them denominations and organizations. See where it come in? But the true church of God is weaved in among every one of them. Methodists, Baptists, Presbyterians, and all through there, the real, true, blood-bought church of God. Like that scarlet streak that the spies is laid out on. They're mixed up in there, but their denominations can't save them. Are you a Christian? I'm Presbyterian. I'm Baptist. I'm Methodist. That don't mean one thing to God. You're a Christian when you're born again. She caused it all. Many times I've heard people say, then, Brother Branham, because Adam and Eve did the evil, hybrid the Word of God, and caused us to get in this condition, God's unjust if He condemns me. I had nothing to do with it. I never sinned. It was Adam that sinned. The Bible said I was born in sin, shaped in iniquity, come to the world speaking lies. So somebody represented me. Amen. Boy, here's a thought. It might choke you. Somebody represented you as a sinner. That was the one that high-bred the Word. And today, if you're expecting the Pentecostal church or the Methodist Baptist to represent you, it's a hybrid word and condemned. You're condemned because Adam condemned you. Adam and Eve, being one, accepted the hybrid form. And condemn the world. Then you say, Brother Bram, why should I? Why should God hold me responsible? Because one man represented me and then I die because that, that man sinned. Then I'm a sinner by representation. That's right. You're a sinner by representation. You never, God don't hold you responsible for being a sinner. He don't hold you responsible because you lie and steal and, and, and things you do. He doesn't hold you responsible for being a sinner. He holds you responsible because you don't help yourself. Amen. There's a way made for you. Amen. You reject the way that God laid down. That's what God condemns you for. There's a way of escape. Hybrid. Hybrid. Oh, how terrible. Hybriding. They hybrid the people. New York, the big molding pot. I got hundreds of precious colored friends. It's born-again Christians. But on this line of segregations and things they're talking about, high-breeding the people, what tell me what fine, cultured, fine, Christian, colored woman will want her baby to be a mulatta by a white man? No, sir. It's not right. What white woman would want her baby to be a mulatta by a colored man? God made us what we are. Let's stay what God made us. Amen. I believe it's right. Amen. When that great fuss come up down at Shreveport here not long ago, that old colored preacher stood out there. He's got a place in my heart. He said, I never was ashamed because I'm a colored man. He said, God made me what I am. Amen. And I'm proud of it. But said, today I'm ashamed the way you people are acting. Yeah. Amen. The way my own people's acting, it makes me ashamed. Amen. Oh my, what are we doing, friends? Man think they know all about it. The people would be better off if you just let them away. They are the way God made them. Amen. Let the brown race mirror the brown race. The white race mirror the white race. The dark race, the yellow race, and whatever more, stay the way God made them. If a violet, God made it, it was white, let it remain white. If it's bl- blue, black, brown, whatever the flower is, let it alone. Amen. If corn was raised a certain way, yellow corn, don't mix it with white corn. If you do, you mix it up, man. It can't breed itself back again. If a mule was, or or jack was a jack and a jenny to begin with, let them stay that way. Don't mix them with horses. You make a renegade. Hybrid. Oh, it's such a curse. Go back to where God started. Let's go back to the beginning. Go back to where God brought us what we're supposed to be. I say this with respect. I say this with honor. I'm going to Africa. But you know what? To my precious colored brother, 
and sisters. One of the greatest mistakes this nation made, it made it on November 11th this year. That was its great fatal mistake. One of the greatest mistakes that the colored race ever made was down in Louisiana and over there when they voted for Kennedy the other night. Put him in. They actually spit on that dress of Abraham Lincoln where the blood of the Republican Party is free. And voted a Catholic, which Booth shot the Lincoln, and he died for the race of people to free him and make him not slaves, and then turn around and vote for a Democrat and a Catholic besides. They brought one of the greatest disgraces they ever brought up. Because why? The white man with his scholarship has given him a lot of ballyhoo. That's it. exactly right. I'm so glad there's many of them knows where they where they stand. Be the same as me spitting on Christ. That heal me and save me from being a sinner. And turn against him for something else. Turn my back up on him and walk away. Oh, this interbreeding. Oh, wow. How, how can the world go on much longer? No wonder the vision of the Lord says here that I've seen it finally come to a spot where she's just one big smoldering heap. She's blowed up. We're on the road out, friends. There's no way, to, no way, there's no way around it. We've got to come to it. Face it. How breeding. Say, I'm not responsible because Eve did that. Eve did do it. She represented us all. Adam represented us. We're sinners and we are sinners. He represented our fallen human nature to take us away from the Word of God. High breeding it. Oh, I know God has said, but surely God understands that I'm Presbyterian. I'm Methodist. I'm Pentecostal. God understands that. God understands one thing. That's the blood. That's all He understands. He knows the blood. He knows no color lines. He knows no race lines. Whether the man's black, blue, white, brown, or whatever color he is, God knows nothing about that. They're sons and daughters. Amen. He made them as his flower garden. He likes to look at them the way they are. Leave them be that way. Eve started this evil thing when she interbred there with this other thing that was near a man that would mix the seed. Because the serpent had a seed that was continually to bruise. I'm taking it on the faith side for the weak Christians that don't understand Let's take the faith there. Say then by faith, by the breeding then, of faith as you say, Brother Branham. Then Eve brought in her theology, her and Adam, and tried to plead one to the other and throw it back past the buck, as they call it in the army. The woman thou gives me, the serpent beguile me, the serpent beguile me. Never give her an apple to beguile. Anyone ought to have common reasonings to know that. But the serpent beguile me. Done something dishonorable. God cursed that thing. They, they can't find a bone in a snake looks like a man. They'll never find it. They're just foolish digging around. That's all. God's secret's with him. That's right. And the land was full of giants. And Josephus said that the great historian, could you imagine? A historian like Josephus saying that the sons of God saw the daughters of man and they pressed themselves from Angels in the human flesh, a historian. If that's so, then Satan's a creator. Amen. Yeah. Then where are we? Uh, yeah. See? There's one creator. Amen. That's God. Amen. Satan only perverts what God has created. Amen. And unrighteousness is only righteousness perverted. Amen. It's legal for a husband and wife to be married, but not run with another. Yeah. See? It's perverting. Death is perverted life. And a perverted church is taken off of original. So we're all condemned by human beings under representation. Adam represents us before God as sinners, unbelievers in His Word. We're carried on that base. Unbelievers of His Word. Oh, God said so, but I know God's a good God. He won't do that. I hear so much that God is a good God. But God is a God of judgment. God is a God of holiness. God is a God of, of righteousness. God is a God of anger. We'll stand before Him when He's anger. The Bible said so. And His very presence will be a consuming fire. That's right. Don't try to judge God by our own feeling. we got to judge God by His words. What He said. Don't go off on what some tantrum. This is a great church that's withered a lot of storms and this is that. Come back to what God said. When I stand before Him, I want to be found innocent. I've ever tried to add one thing to that word or take one way, well, it's just exactly the way it is. Teaching people to tow right up to it. 
If the Bible says this, I can't help what anyone else says. I got to stay right with that. For washing feet. They say, oh, Pentecostal brother, oh, brother Bram, that's all. We used to do that. Let's do it yet if we did it once. Yes. Jesus did it. Washing yes. feet. Amen. Oh, say it's unhealthy. People have athletic feet. I don't care what they got. <laughs> they might have had it in them days. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, Gene. Amen. <laughs> God's a healer. <laughs> See, they try to find a way of escape. Like say, well, I wouldn't drink out of the same glass as somebody else drink out of it. It's just scalded. Yes. Oh, my. My brother and sister is my brother and sister. Amen. 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 God is my protection if Amen. something is wrong. I trust Him. God. Let's go back to the Word. Yes. Yes. I don't care his color, whatever he is, or what church he belongs to. If he's my brother, he's my brother. Yes. I care out the commandments of God. Amen. That's the reason, friends, when it comes to water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. I must remain there. Oh, that keeps me from many great saving souls out there. It sure does on that one issue because of the extreme Trinitarian belief. Sure, I believe in Father, Son, Holy Ghost as offices of God, not of three gods, but three offices of the same God. He is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. But that's titles of His office. He's God the Father. Sure He was in the beginning. He's God the Son that was made flesh on earth. He's God the Holy Ghost which is in me, but it's the same God. Alone, three offices. He once couldn't be touched or nothing. Then he come down and made flesh and took on my sins and bore my sins. Then while he sanctified me with his own blood, then the Holy Ghost could come in and he and I can fellowship. Amen. Like we did in Eden. We, we, we love one another. He's my father. I'm his son. Amen. Not three gods. The same God that created me and loved me and gave himself for me is the God that's in me. His name was Jesus Christ when he was on earth. Amen. Not another name under heaven given among men whereby you must be saved. Amen. Now, if it hurts my friends, I can't help it. I, I'd rather hurt my friend than hurt my father. See? He's my relative. My father, God. That's what his word says. God had never let me hybrid anything. Say the days of miracles is past. Oh, Jesus doesn't do the same. Oh, I, that might be telepathy. That might be mind reading. I don't believe we have prophets in this day. The Bible said we would. Amen. I believe it. Amen. We're looking for anointing, one like John the Baptist who came forth to forerun the first coming of Christ, comes to forerun the second coming of Christ. Amen. As he did, he promised it. To restore the faith of the people back to God. Amen. What was John to do? Restore the faith. Amen. The faith that was once the real seed that was in the Garden of Eden to take God's word, where it was hybrid in but church entity. John comes to bring it back. Hallelujah! Amen. To shake the nation! Hallelujah! Before the great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. Yes. That's John's, John's mission. Anointed one. Notice. Also, you say, well then, why does that condemn me? Because even Adam done this. They represented me as a sinner. I can't help it. Yes, but brother, one day there was one come from glory again. Amen. Oh, he's the one I want to talk about for about two minutes now. One came from glory and become earth. One came and taken on the form of sinful flesh. Yes. He come to represent us too. Amen. And Satan tried to cross him up. Oh, he did. Every hand Satan is there to cross him up. But he never crossed up. He tucked the cross and went up. Amen. 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 Satan couldn't cross him up. No, no. He was a different type of Adam. He come from glory to represent us. What? Well, Adam said, if my wife says so, I guess that's all right. Well, she said she had a revelation. And this is the way it's supposed to be. I know God says it's this way, but my wife said. That's the way the local church member today. Oh, I know the Bible says that, but my church says so and so. Oh, you poor, miserable hypocrite. That's right. Don't you see, God said, let my word be true and every man's word a lie. Amen. Take God at His word. Amen. It's God's word. Don't care what my wife said, what my church said, it's what God said. Amen. So, when they see the inspirator of his wife, Eve, when he come to meet Jesus, it said, oh, uh, yes, it is written. <laughs> Uh, that, uh, and he'll give the angels charge over thee. And that's the time the dash your foot against stone and bear it up. 
Yes, he said, and it's also written. Oh, he couldn't cross him up. He was God made flesh. He was my Savior and my God. He couldn't cross him up. What did he do then? He embraced the cross. And on the cross, he died for me and for you and for the world that he might restore back again to God. What? Sons and daughters. Like in the Garden of Eden before they got crossed up in theology. Oh, God, if people could only see that. If I could only pound that into the people. Jesus died that he might take people away from this hybrid church stuff. That he might bring your minds and faith away from what man has said back to what God said. Not a hybrid faith. Well, maybe the days of miracles is past. Maybe it won't happen. Oh, brother. God said it happens and that settles it. That's for always. God said so Jesus died. That he might breathe back. Oh, hallelujah. Only the blood can do that. Only through the chemistry of the blood of Jesus Christ can breathe back again a person that won't vary one word from what God said. Eve showed her weakness to church. Showed what she did. She said, well, maybe you're right. Maybe God wouldn't hold me responsible because I just don't... Well, if I'm just... uh, What difference does it make as long as I'm baptized? (laughs) What difference does it make as long as I... Oh, you know... That shows you need another breeding. Amen. That shows that something's got to come back to you. Yes, man. To bring you to a faith in what God said. Not one t- jottle or one tot- tittle shall pass from God's word till it's all fulfilled. Amen. Let every man's word be a lie and his be true. Christ came. Amen. That he might breathe back by the Holy Spirit. Oh, brother. As we sit together now. In heavenly places, in Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit breathing upon us like we are now. Breathing back. Taking away the rubbish of theology. Taking away the rubbish of the world. Man-made doctrines. Having forms of godliness. Denying the power thereof. Breathe it back unto an unadulterated faith in God. Jesus said, Satan said, Oh, I know it is written, but it's, you know, it it says, I shall heed. Jesus said, and it's also written. It's also written. Yes, it is written. It, 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 he'll do this and you shall turn to If you're the Son of God, you can uh, perform a miracle here before me and turn these stones into bread. Let me see you do it. He'd be mine and Satan. See the shrewdness of God there? It's written, man shall not live by bread alone. See him right with the Word. He never he defeated Satan every time right on the Word. He stayed with the Word. And if he come to breed us back to sons and daughters of God like we was at the beginning, how can we get away from the Word then? How can we ever get anywhere until we get back to the Word? Well, I hope this tape that goes into people and you're listening to me out across the world, that you'll realize that we've got, if we're Christ, we're born of Christ. We've got to come back to the Word. We'll never be able to educate the people into it. We might build big churches, my brethren, around this world. We might build and have great educational programs. We've tried to do that. It makes renegades. Where is the most criminals come from? From the, not the ranks of illiterate people, but from the educationals. From the line and the, the, the breeding of the high up and up, the education. Not long ago when I stood with the FBI agent, and he poured down on the wall, and he said, I appreciate your sermon. He said, you said that it isn't the poor class of people that produces a poor man that don't know too much and boys, they're a little bit afraid to fool with it. But it's these types that think they can outsmart that other crook. They see where he made his mistake and tried. He went right to the pens and showed all the juvenile cases that's been across the nation and 80% of them are better come out of the aristocratic neighborhoods. Uh, smart, shrewd. Look at the beginning. And I show that's the sons of, Sam, uh, uh, of Cain. Look at Cain's people. What was Cain's people? Follow them to the lineage coming down through Cain's people. What were they? They were shrewd scientists, doctors, high people, religious, high people. They invented how to temper different metals, how to build fine buildings. They were scientists. What did the others come through? Peasants, farmers, sheep herders, so forth. See that? Look at it today. 
These high-minded, they've interbred it into the churches. To the church don't want some poor illiterate person who really loves the Lord to come in there. Maybe the preacher say something they say, Amen. They lead him out the door. They don't want him in their congregation. If he can't dress just right and dress like the Joneses or somebody, you see. They, they don't want him in there. If they can't drive a fine car, drive an old junk up in front of the church. Brother, brother. Oh, can't you see? And many of the people today won't even welcome the colored people into their churches. Oh, God, have mercy on such hypocrites. That's right. God, I want this always as long as i got a church. The doors are open for whosoever will. I don't care if you come in a wheelbarrow. You come on. You come on. I don't care if you're wearing overalls. I'll say one thing. You get right with God. And a pair of overalls can sit down by a tuxedo suit and they'll put their arms around one another and call each other brother. It sure will. It sure will. A calico dress can sit by silk when they put her arms around and say, Sister... Yes, it does something to you. Amen. It breeds it back. And what are we doing now? Setting in heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. Not taking our theology, but letting the Holy Spirit breed us back. The sons and daughters of God. What does the word circumcise mean? Stephen said, that's right. Cut off surplus flesh. See, Cut off the surplus. The part that's not needed. Circumcision. Be cut off. Now... In the Old Testament, the only male could be circumcised. The surplus flesh was cut away. Now, what the Holy Spirit does in the last days, it cuts away the surplus, cuts away the theology of the world, cuts away man-made doctrines, cuts away all unbelief, cuts away everything. Stephen said, Oh, you uncircumcised in the heart and ears. Why do you always resist the Holy Ghost? As your fathers did, so do you. That's where it's at, friend. You've got to get away from saying, well, I, I heard a speech the other night that said, them divine healers, they, they better watch them. It ain't the divine healers. I'd watch them too. But I watch the Word of God, what it says. I take the Word. The Word said so. See, I got to watch them people that believe and speak in tongues because that was another day. They're nothing but devils. What does the Word say? These signs shall follow them that believe to the end of the world. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Jesus' last commission to His church. What's the Holy Spirit trying to do today? To cut off all that unbelief. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Trying to bring the people back to the unadulterated Word where God said like it was in Eden before theology was added. Amen. Bring it back the way it was in Eden when man walked with God and He said, if the tree didn't look right here, He said, be thou plucked up and had over here. The wind is blowing and said, peace, be still. And it stopped. Whatever he was, he controlled all the animals, everything on earth. It was his. He was God over the earth. He had controlling power in him. One came down from heaven in all this pollution and proved that that was God's plan. For he was a son of God. Amen. What did he do? Die that we might come back and be purged through the righteousness of his blood. He represents us this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now to you that says it's wrong for you to be represented by Adam as a sinner... What about through representation we have salvation also? Amen. You can no more save yourself than you can take your bootstraps and jump over the moon with it. You can no more you're born in sin, you're renegade to start with. Amen. Every one of us. Yes. Yes. And we could not help ourselves. And how are we ever going to be saved? One come to represent us. Amen. Jesus. Amen. He came to represent us before God as sons and daughters of God. And He sent His Holy Spirit now that He's brooding over the place, trying to bring us back to birth, to be die to ourselves and be reborn again to be sons and daughters of God, to take God at His Word, to believe Amen. God's Word. Now, if we have condemnation by representation, we also, how do we have condemnation? Because of high breeding. Breeding in the world with the things of God. That's how we have it. Now, how do we ever get away from that high breeding? Turn away from that interbred stuff. Come back to this, to God's Word being truth. Every man's word a lie. What God said is true. Stay right with that. It breeds you right back again into this. There's a way made. One standing at the throne of God this morning to represent you. Your father and mother represented you as Adam and Eve. That's right. When you were born in the world, holy wedlock, it was ordained of God to bring children. Now you're right back to the same spot you was in the Garden of Eden like Adam and Eve, you sons and daughters of God. You're right back to two trees. One of them was a tree of knowledge, and the other was a tree of life. 
Now, do you want to go the scientific way of high breeding? Look where you get. What's, what kind of a mess has man got himself into with this high breeding? What kind of a mess has he got himself into with his own knowledge? Instead of just being a child, humbly and depending on God, he's trying to take science and split an atom. Look what a mess he's in right now. God just lets him destroy himself, that's all. Man destroyed himself in the beginning, separated himself from God, from the fellowship, by the tree of knowledge. He left the tree of life to eat the tree of knowledge. Come away from that hybrid tree. Get over here to the original fruit. It's got life in it. Eat of him. Jesus said, I'm the bread of life that come from God out of heaven. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness, not being mixed with faith. See, Eat manna in the wilderness and they're all dead. But I'm the bread of life that come from God out of heaven. He that eats this bread has eternal life. Amen. I'll raise him up at the last days. He shall never perish. Got everlasting life. Let's come back to the tree this morning. Let's get away from what man says. Let's get away from what the, the, the churches say. Let's come back and take the Bible and believe the Bible. We're, we're too late now to go to fussing. See, we're never going to have any more great organizations raised up. I can prove that now during the time of the church ages. We're never going to have the, another raise up of organizations. The lady you see in church ages just be Pentecostals denominating themselves on down, on down, on down like that. But there'll never be any more great revival start strike the land. Just what few is left in the church will pull what is to come in. For the Bible says the church age is in, in a lukewarm condition. That's right. So it's got to come that way. Now, to all, let's get away from this interbreeding. Let's get back to the real original fruit. Let's go back to the place where God made us as sons and daughters of God to depend on what God said. And don't take the woman's word of high breeding. See how the natural and the spiritual is typed? You see my vision wrote out here of what it was, how the women would be given a right to vote. What has ruined this nation? Now listen, not you Christian women. Women is the backbone of any nation. You break motherhood and you broke the nation to begin with. It has through the history. What is American women? Used to be we went over to Paris to get fashions. Now, Paris comes over here to get fashions for their vulgar, dirty way of living. Come to us to get passions. What's happened? The devil has stripped our women. They take their clothes off. Each year they're taking a little more off. They cut off their hair, which God says it's wrong. Wear these little old clothes that the Bible says it's an abomination before God for a woman to put on a garment that pertains to a man. And now you can't tell whether a man or a woman. Smoking cigarettes. Hybrid is right. Hybrid, they don't even know whether they're man or woman. That's right, you can hardly tell what sect they belong to by looking at them and listening to them. That's true, friend. I'm not saying that about you Christian women. My voice is going around in many nations. But it's a hybrid. This America has become condemned. And what did she do according to the vision? She elected the wrong person. Yes. I don't know how long it will take it to run out, but it will be someday. Right. Thus saith the Lord. Amen. It will. She's on her downward move right now. She'll never come back again. She's gone. That's right. She's been gone since 1956 when she condemned and turned away God from the great revival hours. Now it's time, I guess, for us to close at this time. Have a prayer line for the sick. Now, do you believe that the devil has high-bred the people, the nations? The... Do you believe that? Amen. Sure it has. High-bred the churches? Till we become man-made dogmas instead of Christ-fearing servants? Do you see why I condemn and shake and beat as hard as I can against the wrong thing? How can I do anything else when here the Word says so and the Holy Spirit move into it? I say, Lord, I'll preach. They just dress the same way. They still do the same thing they always did. Preach it anyhow. Just keep moving on. Your voice is, is taped. <laughs> At the day of the judgment, there won't be no, no excuses then. Because you've heard it, see. That's right. You've heard it. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing what the church said. That don't sound right, does it? No. Hearing the Word of God. Amen. Bringing you back to a faith in God. Now, when you come this morning, we want to pray. And we want to pray that God will let you lay aside everything. Amen. Maybe this little message will take that high breeding away from you. Bring you back to a humble servant to walk up and say, I believe God. They've often wondered, I can, I'm going to say this. Hallelujah. Listen to it. 
Say, Brother Bram, your ministry is not compared nowhere in the world. Of its supernatural. Great man, I could call their names. It wasn't for this tape. Called me, come go with them. Said, your ministry is the only thing that will save the world. Why is that not somewhere else? Come back to the Word. God can only build up on that foundation. Then if I'm so firmly wrong in the way I baptize people and the way I talk of the Holy Ghost and the things that I do, then why does God honor it? Produce something like it. Why is it? I don't say that for myself. That would be wrong. But I'm trying to say because I stand on the truth, the Word and the Word alone. Mounting up and making great things in great places, that don't mean nothing to God. Not a thing. It's staying with that Word. Amen. God working in that Word, confirming that Amen. Word, staying with it. Amen. The sign of the living God among us. Yes. Do you want to be like that? Do you want all the world washed away from you? Oh, my. You little children. Hallelujah. God bless you. I'm expecting to spend eternity with you. I'm expecting to be over here in the great Eden with you someday. And when I get there, I had a vision not long ago. You heard of it. And I looked there and I seen all those people there. There were millions of them. And I said, you mean he comes to me? Said, yes, and then we go back with you. I said, well, look, does every minister have to stand like that? Yes, sir. Every minister stand on his ministry with his congregation? I said, yes, sir, this angel is speaking to him. He said that. And I said, then Paul will have to stand too. Paul has to stand with his generation. I said, then I know I'm all right. Because I preached word by word the same thing he did. And we did that, millions screamed out, that's Amen. where we are resting. Amen. 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 That word, that word, no matter what it was, that word. That's why I constrain people to come, like it's going to be this morning, some of them rebaptized again. Paul did. Paul met people who were just so happy and filled with God's goodness and things, shouting and praising God and having a great meeting. He said, but have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Acts 19. They said, we not know where there would be any Holy Ghost. Say, so we're just Baptists, in other words. See, their, their pastor was a Baptist preacher. Exactly right. He was a converted lawyer, Baptist preacher. Paul said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? They said, we know how we're being the Holy Ghost. He said, then, so how was you baptized? What was you baptized? Which way? How, why? Well, we've been baptized by John. That won't work no more. He said, we was baptized to John. He said, John only baptized unto repentance. This is as much water as you can put them under. See? Unto repentance. Not for remission of sins because the sacrifice wasn't killed yet. <laughs> said, unto repentance, saying that you should believe on Him that was to come. Amen. Or even on Jesus Christ. And when they heard this, they walked right out into the water and was rebaptized again in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. the Bible. And Paul in Galatians 1.8 said, If an angel from heaven... Now listen. What am I getting back? This hybrid stuff. Get away from it. If an angel from heaven come preaches any other gospel than this, what I have taught you, Paul, rebaptizing the people again, let him be unto you a curse. Let alone a preacher or a bishop or a pope or a priest. If an angel, bright angel, come down from heaven and said anything contrary to what he said, let him be a curse. How are we going to stand up to it, friends? Not only, now, you can be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and your heart just as smutty as it can be. Now, don't save you. But it's one step of right. Yes. You're saved by your faith through Jesus Christ. That's right. But when you come to this spot and see this and then reject it, then you go back. Yes. This little story, and I'm closing. I've told it before. I may be here. A chaplain once said that they called him in where a guy had been shot with a machine gun and he's dying. He said, are you a Christian? He said, I used to be. Used to be. He said, where'd you leave Christ? He said, I don't remember. He said, you better be thinking because your lungs are filling with blood. He said, you, you better hurry because you're right across the bottom of your lungs. You're shot. He said, I know it. He said, you're dying. He said, yes. He said, and you once knew Christ? Yes. He said, now think real hard because you haven't got... He said, Captain, you just got a little bit of time. To think. He said, think hard now. Where did you leave Christ? And he just struggled, struggling, trying to think. Directly a smile come over his face. He said, I remember I remember. That's what you got to do. Remember when you come against the uh, truth of God, you'll leave Him right there. Yes. You'll leave Him right there. See? And you won't do you no good to go on this way because you got to come back to this. Yes. You're on a detour all the time. I don't want to say you're not a Christian, but you're, you're, you're on a detour. They were Israelites, but not all saved. Right. See? Right. 
That's right. See, you're on a detour right then. You come back to that, and the chaplain said, I remember. He said, start right from there. That's where you have to start this morning, where you got off the line. He said, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. And he died. Where he left Christ was at the cradle. You might have left him at baptism. You might have left him at the Holy Ghost. You might have left him somewhere else. Wherever you left him, don't take this high-breeding church stuff. There's one to represent you this morning for salvation. You don't have to be a sinner. You don't have to be that. You are if you are. God don't hold you responsible for being a sinner. He won't hold you no responsible from now on. But He's going to hold you responsible if you reject this. That's right. He's not going to hold you responsible because that maybe in the past that you didn't know any different from water baptism from receiving the Holy Ghost and the power of God. He might not hold you responsible for that. You might not have heard it before. But from here on, you know better. Come back to the Word. Come back to God. Let us pray now and you think it over while we're praying. Lord, Knowing that I'm immortal and soon I shall go. My days are getting many now. Soon I'll be 52 years on this earth. Lord, I want to be faithful. I want to be true to the end. Around the world, many, many nations, peoples, colors, races, seeing many creeds and seeing them how they mix them up and all their different little fusses and flusterations when in those places there's many true children, many men and women in those places over in that hybrid field there that truly don't want to be there. They think they're doing God's will. I pray thee, Father, this morning to take away all doubts from my little group here today and from those who will be listening at the tapes that you'll take away all the man-made creeds as Jesus, when He came the first time, He found them teaching things that wasn't so from the beginning. From the beginning. While God made it pure and unadulterated, but man had made, took God's Word and made it of non-effect by teaching the creed of man. Father, so is it now at the near coming of Jesus again. Just like the vine. If the vine puts forth a branch... And that branch was a Pentecostal branch filled with the Holy Ghost and signs and wonders of fruits followed that branch. If that vine ever puts another branch, it'll be the same kind of branch. We know that, Father, by nature itself. But we do know that you can graft any fruit that's pertaining to that into that vine and it'll live by the vine. And we know that we can take an orange tree and grow citrus fruits of different kinds. Seven or eight. We can put lemons on it. We, it'll grow right in because it's a citrus fruit. It'll grow grapefruit and many other uh, and tangerines and many other citrus fruits. But if that tree brings forth its own branch again, it'll be an orange, Lord. It'll be like the first one was. And we believe that there is to be a church in these last days that will receive both former and latter rain. It'll be scattered throughout the world. And this lady will see an age. It'll be a church that's called back to the original faith in God. It'll be a church that'll have Jesus Christ walking in it, manifesting Himself. The shout of the King will be in it. God, how you started age after age and how they took that vine and grafted it over in there and it's thriving by it under the name of Christianity but still bringing forth a doctrine that wasn't taught at the beginning. Oh, God, how we, we feel sorry for that, Lord. We don't know what to do. But this morning, I pray that you'll take out of our hearts anything that's man-made. Take and place into our hearts, Lord, the true Word of God. I'm fixing to pray for the sick, Lord. How can I walk down there and have a doubt in my mind that God will not answer my prayer? Then, Father, I'd be a hypocrite myself. God, if there's one speck of doubt in my heart, you forgive me for it now. If there's anything that I've done or said that's wrong, you forgive me. Let me get into what is truth. And Father, I know Thy Word is truth. And I'm trying to stay on that Word. I've been interbred, Lord, back under and by breedings through my generations till I know my mind is muddled. But yet I can look down here and see the Word. I know it's the truth. I long to be there, Lord. I'm holding on to that anchor yonder in the rock. The storms are tossing me up and down and around, but my anchor holds. 
It's in Christ and in His Word. I believe Your Word is the truth. Help me, Lord, to never compromise on one speck of it, but to continue on with godly love, my arms around all people, all races, all colors, all creeds, all denominations, pulling them to the rock. Grant it, Father. Heal all the sick and afflicted. Bring back to the old-fashioned revival type of people today. Bring them back to original Pentecost. Bring them back to the blessings. Bring them back like the Pentecost that fell in AD 33. Give them the Pentecostal blessings. May the power of God come into the church. May there be divine healing gifts given to the church. May there be speakers with tongues, interpreters of tongues. May there be gifts of prophecy and all different manifestations, not make-believe or try-to-believe or put on. May it be real, genuine, coming with the Word. The Word of God made known, prophesying things that comes to pass. You said in your Word, if there be one among you who is, claims to be or supposed to be a prophet, and what he says, and if it don't come to pass, don't hear him. But if it does come to pass, then hear that prophet, for I am with him. God, give us that kind of prophets. Give us the real kind. The real kind that speaks with tongues. The real kind that has the real interpretations. Grant it, Father. Heal the sick and the afflicted, and make yourself known among us, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I love him. I love him because he first loved me and first just my All you Methodist sons of God, Baptist sons of God, uh, all you sons and daughters of God, let's just raise up our hands and close our eyes and sing this to Him and worship Him. I love Him. I love Him. Be Love him, say, praise Jesus. Jesus. Let's say it again. Praise Jesus. Oh, how I. Now, for come, be praised, the Lord. (laughs) Jesus, Jesus, they call him. Pray, Jesus. Uh, Donkey, Jesus. (laughs) Thank you, Jesus. Oh, oh, my. What a day. Uh, how, how praise, how we thank the good Lord for you. Ah, just worship Him. Hard cut message like that. Let's just worship Him. The sweetness of the Spirit back. Be precious blood of God's own Son has saved and sanctified a wondrous people for His name, and they are called the bride. <laughs> Though here neglected and despised, someday the Lord will bring those chosen ones within the gate and that's worth everything all together 
when we're inside the gates of pearl, we'll learn a lot of things. We'll have a heart that's made of gold, perhaps a thousand streams. Oh, we'll sing and shout. Let's sing it again. Don't you love that? Let's sing. The precious blood of God's own Son has saved and sanctified a wondrous people for His name, and they are called His bride. Amen. One day the Lord will bring His chosen ones within the gate, and that's worth everything. All together now, when we're inside the gates of pearl, we'll learn a lot of things. Sing it. The precious blood of for his name, and they are called his bride.
I'll never forsake him because he represents me. Amen. He is my Savior, and because that he died for me, I'm unworthy, but because he took me as his own, he become me that I might become him. He become a sinner and took my sins that I might be a son of God. Oh, how I love you. songs do something to you. I remember a little colored family used to come up here. A man, his wife, and a little girl. I just left. I, I, don't, I can't sing it, but I'm going to try it. I feel the Holy Spirit on me. Amen. Said, oh, what precious love that Father had for Adam's fallen race. <laughs> Gave his only son to Suffer and redeem us by His grace. Oh, I love that. Oh, what precious love that Father had for Adam's fallen race. Gave His only Son to suffer and redeem us. By His grace. I love that, don't you? Isn't there something about now? Those the messages are hard and strict and cutting. That's what the Word of God is. Sharper than a two-edged sword. But when it's all over, see the great Holy Spirit sitting here in a building somewhere watching over angels. Oh, then after it's all over, see Him spread forth His arms. The blessings begin to fall. We raise our arms to Him and worship Him in the sweetness of the Holy Spirit. Does it do something to you? Just cleans you out. Gives you a new start. Brings you back to the Word. How many sick now say, I'm coming to be healed this morning? This is the hour for my healing. One, two, three, four, five. About eight or ten of you. All right. I wonder if my little children here would do something for me. Will you do that? I wonder if you all would just come right back up here just a little bit now. And I'm going to ask the, you all to come right down along the altar here while we pray. While we're still singing, let those who are to be anointed and prayed for, Brother Neville, come. And we're going to pray for them and have water baptism and then an official dismissal in about, about two or three, about ten minutes at the most, I guess. All right. Oh, what precious love that Father had for Adam's fallen reign, gave his only son to suffer and redeem us by his grace. If anybody knows where that little colored family is, I wish they'd come up and sing that again for me during the revival. Amen. It's down on Broadway there somewhere. I forget what their name was. Man, his wife, and a little girl. They have that little stop in it. You know, oh, what precious love that Father had for Adam's fallen rain. Gave his only son to suffer. And redeem us by His grace. See what it is? Adam's race had fallen interbred. All the way down. She come all the way down the line. From actual spiritual unbelief in God's Word. To sexual. To all kinds of filth. Down to the lowest part. And oh what precious love that Father gave for Adam's fallen race. Gave His only Son to suffer. Come down to the lowest there was. And redeem us back up to His Word. Uh, redeem yeah. us by His grace. Now this morning we stand by His grace, saying we are His children. Amen. We have a right to these blessings. Yes. Jesus Christ died to heal every one of you. Thank yes. you Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. That's right. He promised it. And here we, we know that that's truth. How many of you know it's the truth? Amen. Then it's your property. It belongs to you. It's yours. 
Then there's only one thing can keep you from getting it. That's Satan trying to tell you an interbred lie. Yes. What did God say? He was wounded for our transgressions. With his stripes we were healed. Do you believe that to be the Word of God? Yes. Now don't let Satan tell you nothing else. The Word of God said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. How far? All the world. It never has been reached yet. Amen. All the world. How long was this to last? To the end of the world. What? Go ye into all the world, preach the gospel. Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. These signs shall follow them that believe. My name, they shall cast out devils, speak with new tongues. If they should take up a serpent or drink a deadly thing, it should not harm them. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. That's the word. Now lay down on this. Every principle of God lay right there on it. Then come to that spot and say, God, I've repented. I've been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. I've recognized the blood. I've recognized the Son of God. I recognize you, my Father. You've blessed me with the Holy Spirit. Now Satan tries to plague me and make me sick. I come boldly. Amen. No condemnation. I've kept your word. I've stayed here like Hezekiah. When the Lord said, tell Isaiah, go down and tell him, he ain't coming off that bed, he's going to die. He said, Lord, I've walked before you with a perfect heart. Hallelujah. I need 15 years longer. The Lord told the prophet, go back and tell him I heard him. He's going to live. That's right. Amen. It changes things. That's where you got to come. No condemnation. If there's condemnation, you're just, you're, you're just fighting air. you got to come where you're clean and clear. I believe it. I'm standing here. Lord, I believe it. If, I, if you're a sinner and you don't know God, tell God right here, Lord, I'm, I want to be healed. I want to serve you, but I'll give you now my heart. Here I am. Use me. Like the prophet in the temple said, to you hear my send me, Lord, and the angel took a coal of fire. Uh, now, we're in the church. On the evangelistic fields, we use the other type of ministry. In here, we, the Bible said, if for the church, if there's any sick among you, let them call the elders of the church and anoint them with awe and pray over them. Prayer of faith saves the sick. You know that. Amen. James 5, 14. Brother Neville here, our pastor, a good God-sent Holy Ghost-filled man. Hallelujah. How many's noticed Brother Neville climbing? Have you noticed it? Hallelujah. Heard him prophesying last Sunday the first time. Who would have ever thought that a Methodist preacher would have stood like that? Hallelujah. But when the Holy Ghost come on him, something happened. See? Yes. They come right into it just automatically. See, you get right back to the right breeding. Then you've got to move on. Amen. You put life in a grain of corn and put it in the right condition, it'll grow. Amen. Just let it alone. Amen. It'll grow. Amen. That's where the church, if you can ever get back to the right thing, just stay there. Keep moving on. The right sunshine and water and praises and hallelujahs and songs and things, it'll bring, this, it'll bring it right on up to the spot where you can reach and get all things that are possible to them that believe. Now, when He anoints you with oil, I'm going to lay hands upon you. Now, first, I'm going to pray for every one of you. Now, I want you along the line to lay your hands on one another. Now, just put your hands on one another. Why am I doing that? Now, the Bible never said, if Brother Branham lays his hands on it, it said, these signs shall follow them that believe. Yes. If they lay their hands. Is that right? Yes. They lay their hands. Your hands are just the same as any hands. See? After all, it's God's hands that count. Yes. And so, if they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Now, with your hands on each other, let's bow our heads. I want all you church out there to pray for these. Oh. Our Heavenly Father, we bring to you this great line of sick people. God, just think, many of these in here, I trust that every one of them are your children, born of the Spirit, washed in the blood, filled with the Holy Ghost, ready for the coming. And Satan can't get to them that way to make them sin. He can't get to them to make them doubt your word is wrong. And they go ahead and follow it just as to the letter. But then he tries to come along to afflict their body because he knows that their body's still sin, but their soul is saved. Their body's got to go back to the dust, but their soul goes to God. So he tries to afflict that part what he can. But I'm so glad that you included salvation for that body too. This is, this is the earnest of our resurrection, the healing of our bodies. And Lord, on record today, millions of souls, millions of bodies, that's healed. So we know that you are God. And now they are laying their hands on one another. Look at them, Lord. One's interested in the other one. One wants to know, regardless of what church they belong to, what affiliation they have, what color they are, what creed they... What, that has nothing to do with it, Lord. They are your children. 
Some of them are Methodists. Some belong to Baptists. Some belong to Presbyterian. Maybe some Catholic. I don't know. Some are Pentecostal. But you, you don't know them with that name. You know them as yours. They're blood-bought. And they're standing here believing the Word. And they're coming boldly. And I'm, I'm pleading for them as a servant of yours. God, may there not be one feeble person in this building when the service is over. May they ever one be healed. As your anointed elder goes forward placing that oil, that little oil that runs down on their forehead, that symbolizes oil is the Spirit. We put that on there to let the people know that this virgin olive oil has been placed upon their head in similarity of the Holy Spirit coming. Now when I lay hands upon them myself, may they go to their seat so happy, rejoicing, a finished work, it's all over. They're healed, they'll go home to be well. Grant it, Lord, and the shouts and praises will raise up from all over the city, Hallelujah. around different places where these people will go. You know, I once had stomach trouble, but it's gone. I once had so-and-so certain diseases, but it's gone. I just heard that message that morning, breathing back to the Word. And I come back to the Word, and I believe the Word, and now I'm well. Granted, Father, I commit them to you in Jesus Christ's name. Now, with our heads bowed, I want the elder to go far enough to Teddy, if you will. Some of you sing only believe, just as you can. Now, I let the ones just pass right to their seat as we anoint and pray for them.